What's smoking all my dragons, divine righteous, almighty greats, overachieving, never slacking. Today, we are flying over to the Lake District out in England. I'm pretty sure this is northern England, if I'm not mistaken. But just look at just look at that thumbnail right there for a second. Take one one moment to look at how amazing that looks and how breathtaking that view is. It just looks so wonderful. It looks so peaceful. Whew. I would love to be just there right now as we speak, actually. I'm always working, always busy, but I ain't gonna lie. I would absolutely love to be there right now. Imagine having a picnic right on top of that, um, looking at that lake. Whew, let me hop into the video, guys. Original link in the description. I might have to go walk. If I'm done early, I'm probably gonna end up going, go walking on a trail today. I need to. This na these nature videos have been giving me so much life, you guys don't even know. But, let's hop into it, here we go. Welcome to the Lake District National Park, England. It is home to England's highest mountain, but also a World Heritage Site. Let's take a closer look at it. It's crazy, because I was literally going to go, I wonder what Britain's highest mountain is. But uh, if you guys, guys, don't mind the shaky camera, because my setup's kind of crazy right now, because I'm not home. So, uh... Don't mind that, but let's get to it. Here we go. The Lake District National Park is a national park in northwest England that includes all of the central Lake west. District, though, the town of Kendall, some coastal areas, mm. and the Lakeland Peninsulas are outside the park boundary. Covering 2,362 square kilometers, Lake District National Park is a must-visit destination for travelers to England. With 12 of the country's largest lakes and more than 3,000 kilometers of rights-of-way waiting to be explored, there's little wonder the region continues to inspire, with its magnificent views and scenery straight out of a painting. It is the most visited national park in the United Kingdom with 16.4 million visitors per year, the largest Jeez. of the 13 national parks in England and Wales, and the second largest in the UK. In common with all other national parks in England, there is no restriction on entry to or movement within the park along public routes, but access to cultivated land is usually restricted to public footpaths. The area was long isolated from the south and east by moorlands, peat bogs, lakes, and forests. Two Roman roads were built across the region, and later Norse invasions resulted in a period of forest clearance. The area was designated a national park on May 9, 1951, and the increased social mobility of the population of the industrial regions of northern England has stimulated the tourist industry. Having failed in a previous attempt to gain UNESCO World Heritage status as a natural world... The view is just mind-blowing. If y'all been on my channel, y'all know I always speak about my favorite lake, which is uh, Cayuga Lake in Ithaca, New York, upstate New York. We used to go tubing as a kid all the time on that lake and just... It was magnificent. You know, it was really, really good times. And I love lakes. Just something about lakes speak to my heart. That make me feel just really good, honestly. World Heritage Site, because of human activities, it was eventually successful in the category of cultural landscape and was awarded the status in 2017. The Lake District has more than 16 lakes and numerous tarns, plus a stretch of coastline. So there's plenty of opportunity to go rowing, sailing, windsurfing, kayaking, paddle boarding, fishing or simply splash about on the shore. Other things to do include visiting the park's many fells, including the 978 meters high Scaffold Ooh. Pike, the highest mountain in England. Be sure to also spend time exploring some of the lovely little towns and villages dotted throughout the region, such as Grasmere. The National Park has the highest concentration of outdoor activity centers in the UK. It is the birthplace of British mountaineering, and there is a tradition of unrestricted access to the fells, 
plus an extensive network of public rights of way. The Lake District is indeed a spectacular place to go for a trip. Since it's a place known to be wet most times of the year, it's essential to visit it during drier months. That's why we think that the best time to visit the Lake District is during June and July, when everything is dry and warm. If you love this video, hit the like button and subscribe. You should also check out all the other great videos on our channel. Maybe I'll do one on Manchester coming up soon. I've heard a lot about Manchester. But, uh, whoo, that Lake District, it looks incredible. It reminds me of, um, like, how I always talk about Cayuga Lake. We have the Finger Lakes which are, you know, different bodies of, of, of big lakes that are spread across upstate New York. So the Lake District having those different lakes around each other kind of definitely reminds me of that. Definitely a beautiful place. And I'm sure that somebody watching this video, I have a feeling uh, it's going to be someone who had a lot of memories in the Lake District. Do, uh, let me know, guys. Do they do like tubing and all that good stuff out there too? Like is that is that big? in the culture out in England, because I'll tell you this much, in America, we, we like our tubing, we like our jet skiing, all that good stuff, man. I mean, it's just a good old fun time. Something about the lake puts me in like a, a meditative type of vibe. I just love, I just feel like it speaks to me. Obviously, you have to be careful with any body of water, especially now. And I say now because it's just so much going on. And, um, if you aren't too logical and, you know, too intelligent and you uh, believe in, you know, different folklore, then you always definitely got to respect the lakes. I feel like so much happens to people, you know, with, you know, people drowning and different things is because, you know, they, they may not be respecting the lakes like that or they may not understand the energy around that lake. So one thing about me is I always do extensive research before I really go and, and uh, I say jump into like a, a body of water. Definitely should do, do research around the area. That goes with anywhere you go because uh, we just never know. You know, and a lot of people do. It's, it's like, for example, I'm going to I'm I'm use this example. You got Lake Lanier and... Um, in, in, in America, you know, which was, you know, a, a so-called black town that was flooded. It's like certain places you go, you just got to be careful. There's certain places that we can, we got some haunted stuff in America. I'm sure England has a whole lot of haunted stuff too, but you just got to know where you're going. You know, that's, that's just a message because you never know. You just never know what energy is around that place. But um, this seems like, like good energy, definitely seems awesome. I want to look into how many people have drowned or, you know, things like that as far in the Lake District or has there been zero drownings there? What kind of sightings of animals, like any folklore? Like, I want to know more history about it. So I'm going to definitely be doing more research. But with that being said, to all you beautiful people out there, that was Lake District National Park out in England and it had some breathtaking views. I'm gonna go eat some good food, some good food now. I'm gonna be like y'all, go try some fish and chips. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do that one day. But uh, original link in the description. I will talk to you all soon. Much love, y'all.